Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial. Today, Ace will be showing you how to do a 3D camera zoom in Adobe After Effects. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe to this channel. If you would like to support Ace, you can become a Patreon and join the Discord using the links below. Comment below what you'd like to see next. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope you all have a great day. Hey guys, Ace here, and today I'm going to be going over how I set up my 3D cameras. As you can see, all I did was add a few objects in the scene. I did some uh, zooming and a little bit of vertical motion as well. Um, I think it looks really natural when you use it correctly, and um, there's a few tips and tricks I'll show you along the way, so stick around and maybe you'll learn something new. As you can see, the uh, raw footage here isn't very interesting, so we're going to go ahead and start off with the first step, and that is adding a camera. So the shortcut to add a camera is Control alt shift c and then I usually name my cameras cam and then you want to make sure you have the 35mm uh, preset on and then enable depth of field, that's huge because we're going to mess with the focus distance. Um, so click OK. So I'm going to shorten this camera to where it's only over this clip, so I'm going to hit alt right bracket and that will shorten the clip to that, that moment in time and then I'm going to change the bottom layer to 3d by checking this box right there and now when you move the camera it will move that clip as well so i actually don't use the camera's controls because um i don't know it looks it gets becomes a little tricky especially when you try to do vertical movements because if you try to change the middle value it'll start to rotate it see that and if you want that that's fine but um what i usually do is hit Control alt shift y to add a null and I'm gonna bring this down right over the camera and then shorten it to where it's only over that layer. And then I'm going to also change this one to a 3D layer. So now I'm gonna change this one to cam control and I'm going to parent the camera to our cam control null. So now when you move this null around, it will move the camera as well as the clip. So now we have, all we have to do is mess with this layer to affect everything underneath it. Um, so next I'm going to do is go and add a few objects in. I'm just going to right click and layer new shape layer. And then I'm going to just add a circle and I'm going to duplicate it a few times. Keep in mind that these circles that I'm adding is just going to be a kind of a placeholder so you can see that it is indeed parallaxing. So when you add your own 2D objects, maybe they're like animating or they're, it's a particle system or something like that. It's, oops, um, it will parallax with the scene. So now from here, I'm going to change this layer into a 3D layer as well, and then press P to single out the position. And I'm going to decrease the Z depth to make the particle a little bit closer to us. Um, and I'm going to scoot it over to the side, so it's over here. So now let's take a look. If we move our camera, it will move in a different layer of depth than the rest of the scene. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. I'm just going to duplicate this two other times. And then let's put one over here. With this one, I'm not going to have quite as far out. I'm going to make it a little bit closer there. So maybe screw it over some. Maybe I'll make this one even further out like that. Yeah, sure. And one thing you'll notice when you make something closer to the camera, as it gets closer and closer to the camera, it'll start to blur more. See that how it's starting to fray, and when, this is with no effects. This is simply from the uh, aperture of the camera. When something is closer to the lens, it's going to blur more because the um, focus distance is at a certain point. So let me show you what the focus distance is. So let's um, select our camera, and we're going to change our active camera to top. So now we can have a top view of our scene. So. Let me change the camera to whites just so we can see this better. So now if I zoom in here, you can see the different shape layers and how far away, how close they are to the camera and how far away they are from our scene, which is right here. Um, so yeah, if you wanna see more than one view at a time, you can click this and go to two views, like horizontal, so you can see the top view and the um, active camera. So you like change this value, you can actually see what's happening. And I'm just going to add one more circle and then I'll start animating our camera. Um, let's duplicate this one, move it over here and make this almost even with the uh, scene there. See how it pops through on the back side? That means if you ever, if that ever happens, that just means you went too far. You can see this number go positive, which means it went behind our point of interest. All right. So I'm just going to put it right there and I'm gonna scale it down. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and animate our camera using our cam control. I'm going to separate my dimensions because I think that's a lot easier to do. And then I'm going to press F9 and just simply zoom this in all the way in. I right about there. That should be good. And then I'm going to move the graph over like that. So I'm also going to do a little bit of a vertical slide as well. So let's um, keyframe that, drag that down. I'm just going to move this this way a little bit and then going to scale this up okay so now we have it kind of slides up into the scene and then just zooms in to the center now what I want to do is I want this first particle here to be in focus first and then I want the rest of the scene to be in focus so in order to do that um, you hit the drop down arrow on camera and go to your camera options and you can keyframe your focus distance so let me adjust this value so you can see what that does if you lower the value I'm gonna hold shift and drag so it goes by faster. You lower it so you can, oops, too far. You can see that it'll start to bring into focus things in the front of the scene rather than the back. And I don't like how the default aperture looks, so what I do is I change this um, iris shape from fast rectangle to hexagon, and then that kind of smooths it out some. And then you can adjust the amount of aperture as well if you like. It's kind of just the amount of blur. Um, so I'm going to put it right around 25. All right. And then I'm going to, so I want this at the beginning. And then at the end, I want the focus distance back to where I've seen is. There we go. So I'm going to put this towards the end. All right. Let me play this shot first. All right. It could look a little better, but I'm going to go ahead and move on. Um, so I can just show you guys how this method is done. So let's go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm going to hit control alt shift C to add a camera a cam 35 mil depth of field is on and alt left bracket to shorten it there. I'm going to change it to white again. So it's easier to see. And then uh, control alt shift Y to add a null and then 30 layer that null and 30 layer R clip as well and then parent our cam to the null. Um, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the motion first. So I'm gonna press P, right click and separate the dimensions and then keyframe my Z position. It's a simple increase, right about there. And then our um, Y position, I'm going to do like this. Okay, so now I'm just gonna duplicate one of these solids. So I'm gonna hit Control C and then Control V. Uh, left bracket to move it over and then I'm going to position it let's scale it first position in a similar spot and similar size all right that's pretty much the gist of it let me go into our camera settings here I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to um, keyframe our focus distance f9 to make it to easy ease and then I'm going to decrease this number all the way down until only our shape layer is focused and now a tip to get your focus distance correct is to change the view to top view um, left and right works as well but I usually use top view just just cuz and then when you change your focus distance value you can see where it actually is so I want this the focus distance to be right on our shape layer so as you can see there's not a lot of change that's happened so what you can do is increase the aperture so if you increase this number you'll see the effect that we want start to happen so you increase it increase it I want it right about there and I'm gonna change it to hexagon again and let me scrub through okay doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and play through the whole thing and see what it looks like. Oh, I forgot to um, change the graph on these. There we go. Like that. And I think that one's fine. And that's pretty much it for this concept. Um, when you start adding things to the scene, you don't have to keep on, you know, like adding blurs to each individual layer and make them match the motion, all that stuff. All you do is just change the. Um, the aperture settings on the camera and the focus distance and things like that so you can save a lot of time and a lot of rendering power as well in doing this rather than adding all, all those Gaussian blurs or BCC lens blurs um, so yeah that's pretty much all I have thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time